All right. right. Welcome, everybody. Session 50 something, 58, maybe? I have 62 in my notes. 62? Okay. Uh, session 62 of Descent into Vernia. Uh, who would like to give the recap? I know it's been a while. <clears throat> uh, I have some notes. Um, okay. We entered the Wandering Emporium uh, the session before, um, and uh, Master Hawkins offered us red bowls and sandwich pies. Um, and so we ate them, and then we headed to the Seven Golden Seals, um, where uh, we got a room uh, for the, the night. Uh, I'm pretty sure we got like a suite. Um, I forgot. I, I forgot how we managed to do that, but we we negotiated to perform a service, or we had to uh, heal the. Forget what the name of the creature we're riding on is Wilfred. Wilfred. Yes. Yeah, Wilfred has a telephone pole sized telephone sized telephone yeah. pole sized <laughs> pole in its leg. Um, so we stayed the night and recouped. Um and uh then we uh we signed a contract to get our comp tonight um and uh then I, we spent a lot a long time debating whether or not we were going to do that <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh the Brandon one, Lux and Melodia decided not to get the presidential suite. Um, they went and paid for, uh, I think they went and, and, and paid for a different one or got, they went to like a, a, a lesser quality suite. The random in. The random in. Um, we heard, or Lux overheard that attacks happen every so often but this was the first time they wounded Wilfred um, because, and it was different because uh, the Duke has really been hit, which um, is somebody else, uh, which is another kind of person like who, like a protector of sorts who lives in, uh, lives in the Wandering Emporium. He's a 20 foot golem. Yeah. 20 foot golem. Um, this was the first time that Master Hawkins actually had to take action against the warlords. Um, so that's it's pretty significant uh, as far as the threat goes. Uh, and um, we, we went outside to inspect Wilfred, and that's about where, where I know it's ended. I mean, we rolled really well to get the telephone pole out. We borrowed a vehicle in part to do it. Uh, and some spells were cast to help us do it. The vehicle, however, was ultimately destroyed <laughs> when the telephone pole was dislodged. Uh, and Ewan had to do the cinematic running away from the <laughs> explosion. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're not going to be uh, returning the remains of the vehicle. You also um, have a bucket of Sovereign's glue that you chose not to use. Um, nobody wanted to risk getting stuck to Wolfred forever. Right. Um, and uh, just a fucking skeleton hanging from the fucking side of him. <laughs> Time to roll a new character. <laughs> How did Blade die? Well... <laughs> yeah, I mean, even if you're stuck to Wilford with Sovereign Glue, obviously you can lose a limb in this game and continue on. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, just don't get your head stuck. <laughs> um. Also, one other minor correction. How did you drink that much already that quick? Oh, that old man. Um. She's definitely my daughter. <laughs> um, the one, the one correction is that they were not Red Bulls; they were Pepsi's. Ah, uh, 
you know, blue uh, cans, you know, gives you a bit of a buzz or sugar, <laughs> sugar eye. And it was little Debbie's oatmeal pies. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so uh, you guys have completed the task. Um, Master Hawkins is uh, surveys the the work that you guys have done and he says, wow, you guys did such a great job. You really did. You really helped out Wilfred and me. Thank you guys. You helped so, us. Oh, go ahead. Uh, go on, Lux. Oh, you helped us out. <clears throat> so it is a mutual, a mutual, uh, mutual uh, exchange of of uh, favors. Do you oh. need to like rub some? Do you need to rub something on that wound? Uh, Wilfred heals real fast. He should be fine. Um, but uh, what what was it that you guys were gonna get again? What what did I promise you in return for this? You promised. Uh, well, we stayed the night for free. We stayed the night. Uh, night in the seven golden seals. Oh, I gotta get you more than that. Ugh. Two nights. <laughs> <laughs> Redeemable. Redeemable whenever we choose. <laughs> uh well, first of all, I'll give you another token mm -hmm. uh so you can get here uh if you need to. Um and uh, uh, uh let me let me see what I have in my personal stash. Because uh, I think there's there's something that I can uh, give you guys for your trouble. Um, so ju just give me a little bit of time. Uh, and then uh, Master Hawkins um, uh, invites everybody to walk with him back into the town, uh, having whistled, uh, and then Wilfred lowering himself into the ground so that it's, the town is flush with the ground inviting you guys to to come back into the town before Master Hawkins once again rises it into the sky as Wolfrid begins walking, which you can tell from the the rhythmic kind of thud. Um, and it's at that point that you realize that his walking doesn't seem to disturb the town very much, um, despite the fact that his steps are large and lumbering. So there's probably some kind of magic that is uh, lessening the impact of those steps. But um, so you all return to the town uh, and he says, yeah, so I'll, I'll come find you guys in a little bit. I'm going to go and see what I can dig up uh, in, in return for your services. Man, thank you guys so much. That would have taken me so long to do. And and I have these other things that I got to get to. And, and I got to take care of the Duke. And I got to make sure that this doesn't happen again. So, um, so yeah, you guys you guys uh, take care of yourselves for a bit. And, uh, and I'll be back. And he uh, walks off. Did we just leave the vehicle? What was left of it? Yeah. Do we have to pay for that? I don't want to no. pay for it. No. Okay, good. Uh, in fact, you, you are quite sure that Tallow, uh, the uh, mechanic and owner of the garage, uh, was more than happy to just uh, give you guys what you needed, whatever you needed in return to for helping master hawkins so whatever the cost incurred uh is definitely not going to be absorbed by you sweet but then somebody's going to show up at tallow shop <laughs> looking for their vehicle <laughs> just goes to show maybe we don't leave our vehicle there <laughs> <laughs> we don't know for sure if this is if that was somebody else's vehicle maybe it was just a shop owned a loner 
Yeah. I thought it was. Like yeah, I, I thought, thought it was too. I thought we borrowed like um shoot, um, what was her name? Tallow. Tallow, yeah. Um, so it wasn't uh one of her personal vehicles or one that was owned by the shop, I don't think. Um, it was one that she had that was able to meet your needs, um, considering the various states of disrepair of the other vehicles in her shop. Um, so it's not really clear, like, who it belonged to. It could have been hers, it could have, been, but, you know, it doesn't seem like it was. But it did seem like she was more than willing to uh, lend it to you guys and and accept the loss if needed. Gotcha. <clears throat> Just a vehicle that somebody left and never picked up. Yeah. Because it's Fernia. <laughs> yeah, sort of, they, that sort of thing happens. They, they died. <laughs> <laughs> the vehicle no longer had an owner. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so you guys are now standing in the middle of the town uh and can proceed with whatever business you have while master hawkins determines a fitting uh reward <clears throat> do any of you need anything i mean obviously Elodie is not here she needs arrows yeah, that's the main thing I think is the, the, the arrows. I could uh, I could use more bolts. Um, to, to the charms and harms, I guess. Then. All right. Uh, so heading to the charms and harms, uh, you start out in front of the shop, which is uh where uh. Uh, Le Good Links Blatt. What was his name? Swervathan. Yeah, Swervathan Le Good Links Splat. Uh, so Swervathan is there minding the counter. Uh, and he sees you and he says, Oh, you have returned. Uh, how can I help you today? Or are you here to see Hev Smythe? That's the guy who sells weapons. Yes, he sells weapons. I sell some too, but more magically inclined. Um, <clears throat> do you sell do you sell silver bolts? Or is that the smite question? You you would need to see Heb about that. Uh is is who is Heb? Heb Smythe. Heb Smythe. Uh, the, the, you, you've met him. He's, I've only uh, known him as Smythe. Ah, yes. His first name is Heb. Hmm. <clears throat> well, I might be back. Oh, yeah. Well, take your time. He walks into the other half of the shop. And as you walk in, you hear uh a disgruntled voice go, ah, son of a bitch! Uh, and you see a tabaxi uh, walk out, like, hold, like, throwing his hand, clearly having smashed it with a hammer. Oh, God damn. What do you want? You ought to be careful. Those hammers are heavy. You think I don't know that? What what do you what do you need? What are you here for? I am looking for silver the crossbow bolts. Silver crossbow bolts. Yeah, I, I got some of them in stock. Uh, and silvered arrows. Yes, and silvered, silvered arrows. I I have some of those too. Uh, just uh, give me a few minutes and to go find them. Uh, go go ahead and look around and see if there's anything else that you need. I'll look. Okay. Yeah, go browse. Um, 
Is there anything paying, partic else? paying particular attention to the new oversized item section? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I needed a giant club or a cloud sword, but you know what? A cloud sword is something I need. <laughs> Uh, there, are, there certainly are some uh, weapons made for larger creatures. Uh, let's see. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, let me... You're okay. You're okay. Hmm. All right. So, um, after a few minutes, almost, uh, Heb returns with, uh, two quivers of silvered arrows and a uh, one uh, case of silvered bolts. Uh, so uh, 300 gold pieces for the arrows, 150 for the bolts. Or one soul coin, or even a half a soul coin. If it's already got a charge spent. How many soul coins do we have? Eleven and a half, or twelve and a half? Uh, eleven point five as of session forty-nine. Yeah, eleven point five is what you guys still have. Um well no, I, I can give the point five. <laughs> who has them by the way? I don't know who carries the, the purse around here. The man and the uh the um bag of holding. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're in the bag. And I think that's being carried by well, not Darius, although Oh yeah, that is the name that's there. <laughs> I thought it was Ewan that's carrying it. I don't remember specifically carrying them. Oh, you were you were just you you put the the fiend coin into it into the bag of holding. I think. Right, I, I do remember back when I was still playing Solomon. Uh, I was under the impression that Ewan had the money. Because I was going to steal it so that I could run to the pet store before you woke up. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> sure. I mean, unless we have 300 gold, I don't have that much. I also do not have 300 gold. I've got 40. No. Um, I have six listed on my sheet. Gold is not a not a thing we come by very much in uh, this land. You, you know, if if you guys are uh, really likely to need to continue to restock on arrows and bolts, I, I do have something that can magically produce them, uh, but that's going to be much more expensive. How much more expensive? I want three soul coins for it. Can it make arrows or bolts? It every morning with a command word, you can make twenty bolts or twenty arrows. Silvered. They're not going to be special, but they'll be magic. So they'll hit yeah. some creatures fine. <laughs> 
Magic don't mean shit in this land. Wow. Just offering it in case it was of interest. Can't even... Can you give us a discount for Master Hawkins' uh, favorite uh, guests? Uh, any deal you made with Master Hawkins is between you and him. This is my shop. Uh-huh. Well, this is fair. We're, we kept the Wilford moving. And I appreciate that, but that's between you and Master Hawkins. Master Hawkins wants to pay your tab. That's on him. But you need to have him tell me that. He is a he is an upstanding merchant, Ewan. You must we can run a, <laughs> We can run a tab. <laughs> <laughs> Just buy everything. It's like, all right, Hawkins, we got us. We know what we want. <laughs> we'll take the whole fucking store. Master Hawk has got it. <laughs> I would be willing to pay three soul coins for uh something that would produce magical bolts or arrows. Uh with with uh it with the with the uh with the assumption in mind that uh, our vehicle no longer requires soul coins to operate. Wait, you got That's a true. You got a vehicle that doesn't need soul coins to run? I mean, I didn't mean to say that. Uh, that uh, We heard about the rumor that we're about to check out that's what we need the bolts and arrows. Wow. Well, we we can't even guarantee our vehicles where we left it. Yeah, that's a uh, common issue here in the Bernia. Yeah. So Back on. Get back and it's on the cinder blocks. <laughs> <laughs> you find uh, Trebek in in his underwear tied up outside <laughs> in the trunk. It's like I didn't even know we had that. <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> I have no idea you? what the what the value of a soul coin is here. So is that a good deal? I mean, I guess you can only make 20 bolts or 20 hours a day, but that's probably enough. <clears throat> I don't think we go through that many a day. Hmm. I mean, you can always buy the the quiver and the silver arrows and the silver bolts. Hmm, Smythe, where do you obtain such magic? Where do you where do you typically obtain obtain your uh, your items? Obtain ninety percent of what you see in the shop. I made myself. You imbue them with your own magic, uh, your own magic sigils and such. Well, swerve it then helps me with some of the magic aspects of it, but. Oh. All of the base materials personally crafted by me. Hmm. Is there, have we ever, have we heard of any other settlement besides that, like people actually live at Infernia besides? I mean, this is technically like in a in a in a pocket dimension, mm -hmm. but like, is there another place besides the 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 floating city that got stuck here that people actually live in? Uh, Flame Keep. So, uh, first of all, um, Wilfred's back is not a pocket dimension. The Seven Golden Seals is. Oh, okay. But, uh, Everything else on Wolford's back is actually Infernia. Um, <clears throat> the only other settlements that you've seen are uh, Fort Knucklebone, where Mad Maggie lives, and um, and this one. Uh, Got you. You, I mean, uh, 
Feanor's realm could possibly host other individuals that actually live there, though you didn't encounter anybody that was alive aside from her. Gotcha. <clears throat> I was wondering if I could, I was wondering if, if Blade using his merchant background could work out like where he could be like an official reseller of Smythe, <laughs> Smythe, Smythe and Swerve Vans and like get items at cost in exchange for like, for like bringing shit fit, like faring goods to other places. Um but uh, maybe you know, maybe Mad Maggie would be basically be the only person that would take him up on that. He'd be a one customer. I mean, it's pretty safe to assume that there's other settlements in Fernia. You just have yet <clears throat> to come across one. Um, especially because there's, I mean, there's a lot of roving war bands, but you know. Also, like Mad Maggie, because she's also considered a warlord, they likely have established bases. Um, like with the uh, the Shadow of Death, like they, their base was technically right near that bridge. Um, but they were much more dinky warband than others. Uh, so... The, the war band that attacked Wilfred may have a settlement. It may not be too far away from where you guys <clears throat> were before Wilfred started moving about again. I have doubts about uh, this plan. <laughs> <laughs> about turning up with like a uh, magic a bag of holding filled with valuable objects and being like, who wants to buy them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, you need some uh you need some um probably some extra muscle i don't yeah. think we're quite enough unless we're very very tactful and specific about who we ask <laughs> you need like a, a wilfred's foot to like come down on command <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's one but other I option mean... We just become our own warlords and fucking get our own demons to follow our orders. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's always an option. <laughs> yeah, I, I would. They, pull you can say fuck it. This is my home now. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go native. Right. right. <laughs> Even if the material world is taken over by uh, Belshalor, we have Wilfred's back. <laughs> we'll be fine but yeah I would pull Blade away saying that I like want to show him something that I saw when I was browsing and then say at the very least if you're going to buy the the quiver you should see if you can get the quiver and the silvered arrows for the three soul coins haggle a little bit This is fine. I, uh... <clears throat> I will, uh, I will attempt. He's, uh, he keeps waving his hammer at me though. And it, uh, it makes me, it makes me uneasy. Just imagine like Smythe was like, you know, just he's just like kind of glaring, glaring at us because we're interrupting him. He can't get back to work or doing anything while we're here. Yeah, not far off. <laughs> if he, he intimidates you, yeah, if he intimidates you, picture him as a kitten holding a <laughs> tinier hammer. <laughs> he is already a very fluffy cat, Tabaxi. So, uh, uh, Beg or, sorry, Blade will, uh, will return back and he's like, yeah, if we get to, <clears throat> if we uh, spend uh, pay the three soul coins to get the quiver, uh, or rather the uh, 
uh, get the magic item or the item that produces bol bolts and or, or arrows. Can you throw in some silver arrows with it? Since uh, three soul coins is a pretty hefty sum. Uh, give me a persuasion check. All right, come on. With advantage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh shit! I got. I just went away from the screen. Uh, why did you roll? Uh, so the nineteen is pretty decent. So with the nineteen, uh, Hab kind of considers, uh, and he says. I'll give you one quiver or one case. Let's throw that in with the 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 magic quiver. I will take the quiver. All right, and it's a deal then. Three soul coins for a quiver and a quiver. Uh, he reaches into Ewan's pocket. <laughs> grab some money that's not where that that's not where those go <laughs> those aren't coins <laughs> those aren't coins do not <laughs> um, so yeah now we now have eight and a half soul coins For those who are keeping the spreadsheets back home. <laughs> the audience. Ordinarily, I might suggest we buy healing potions, but given where we're going back to, uh, it's probably not worth the money. Because we would use them all right away? No, because the uses would come for everyone who has healing potions. <clears throat> I mean, I still have one, but we're probably better off relying on spells until we're out of uh, whatever that place is called. The inside of the scab. Unless we can find some alternative. But I don't know what that would look like. So, don't mean a nose into your business, but uh, this is the second time you came in wanting silver arrows and silver bolts. So, I gotta ask, you got any spellcasters on you? With you? I'm a spellcaster. Do you have a a silvered magical focus? I do not. Well, just like how silver arrows and weapons are more effective against, you know, fiends, uh, magic cast through a silvered focus is going to be more effective than not. So if if that was something that you would be interested in, Swerbethan can hook you up. No, oh, I appreciate the tip. But also, just just want to make sure you, you guys are aware. <clears throat> there's different materials for different creatures. Like silver is good for fiends and some other things, but uh, for. Uh, other creatures, they're a bit more rare here. You're gonna need gold. What uh, what creatures? What creatures are weak to gold? The softest and most beautiful of metals. Well, I don't understand quite how it works, but you know they say silver purifies. Uh, gold corrupts. I guess I don't know. It doesn't seem 
logical to me because <laughs> gold is the most beautiful thing in this world. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, creatures that are more pure, I suppose, uh, they uh, tend to be more affected by those things. So, so things like, uh, I don't know, angels or uh, elementals. I see. Like I said, they're more rare around these parts, but uh, still. If you're gonna be prepared, be prepared. Do you have anything with the? Uh, do you have anything that would uh, for uh, for oozes? For what? Oozes. Oozes. Yes. Um. I I can give you a big jar. I mean, oozes are not. <laughs> there's nothing to them. Except that you're disgusting. Um, how about how about uh, a giant uh, blood clots? What the fuck you been fighting? Giant blood clots. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's a new one on me. I never heard of anything like that. After we leave here, we are going to the scab, and we are going to uh, maybe die. Maybe maybe we'll get out alive. Scab. Yeah, giant. Just picture this mountain, and it is one of the biggest mountains you've ever seen. But when you get to it, you realize it is not a mountain. It is a pus-filled stain on the land. And it actually oozes pus instead of lava. Yeah, I've I've heard of it. I've actually seen it from Wilfred's back before when we crossed not too far from it. That area stinks. Man. It's filled with all sorts of oozes and blood clots. Well, I guess that makes sense. Um Well, if you're fighting blood clots, then you might want anything that would cause a person or a living thing to like wither would probably be helpful. Um, I know there are some spells that can do that kind of thing. I don't have any weapons per se that can cause that kind of effect, but that might... That might help. All is good to know. And uh, Blade turns to the branded one. You need to start learning spells that make other people with her. I'll get right on that. <laughs> <laughs> So, Kurt, the branded one would know, uh, being a magic user, um, that it's kind of a lay person's way of saying necrotic damage. <clears throat> so, uh, anything else you guys need? I think we're good. Thank you for your time. Uh, yeah. All right. You 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 know where the door is. And he goes back to to hammering whatever it was that he was hammering. So in the charms side of the shop. Do they have scrolls? Uh, <clears throat> yes. There are scrolls. So if uh, 
if you have uh, an idea of what kind of scroll you're looking for, I can determine if it's likely to be there. Just occurred to me that uh, while maybe potions might draw the ire of the blood clots, uh, pure wound scrolls wouldn't, <laughs> presumably, unless they just happen to be well read. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there are there are some uh, cure wound scrolls. Um, let's see. There are, or even better, we could find a ring of spell story. Just load it up. <laughs> that sounds uh, promising. What's uh? What's Blade's charisma? <laughs> Uh, modifier or score? Yeah, modifier. One. God damn it! But he's proficient in uh, proficient in. Uh, he's a rogue, so he's proficient in uh, persuasion. Plus yeah, so nine, am I. Like... Or he's doubly proficient, actually. Yeah, yeah. he's plus nine though. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, that's pretty good. I was only thinking about these shadow master kopeshes because they deal extra necrotic damage equal to. Charisma modifier, uh, <laughs> which is fucking useless it, to both of yeah. us because we only got plus one. <laughs> <laughs> um, see if uh, see if the tabaxi can modify the weapons to make them based off your uh, persuasion score <laughs> or my strength. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> pretty much any other fucking score that isn't wisdom or charisma. Uh... Yeah, you're right. Let me ask him. <laughs> I'll be right back. Uh, before before we get there, uh, Brandon, one, give me an investigation check. <laughs> Wait, <I'm laughs> okay. Uh, so you actually do find a ring of spell soaring. So I'll uh, look you, at you it. Also, and then in, in addition to that, you find three scrolls of cure wounds. Uh, two are second level, and then the third is third level. Damn it. A purse just left. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, and then, but when I find the when I find the ring of spell story, I will do my best to not have my eyes widen. <laughs> this, this I didn't really think I was going to find anything in here that I was like going to really really want that I would really really like that one. <laughs> Give me a I mean, not, to check. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're pretty confident that you do a good job of uh, keeping your poker face. <laughs> oh man. Um so, so I I am going to I'm just basically at this point uh browsing in the charm side waiting for Zarius to get back so that we could discuss this. You and Ewan. You and yeah. As if you're waiting for Zarius, you're gonna be waiting for a while. <laughs> um hey, we don't know that. You could kill this guy and then that's it. <laughs> so um you and based on Heb's comment before, you would know it wouldn't be Heb that you'd have to check in with because it's really Swervathan that does the enchanting of the weapons and stuff. So it would be him that you would likely need to ask. Wait, can't hear you. Yeah, you're muted. Yeah. So Heb, Heb Smythe, that was the tabaxi, right? Yeah, Heb is the yeah. tabaxi. Swervathan is the tortle. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah. So I was gonna go back to Heb. 
Right, but Heb said that it's Swervathan that does all the magic oh, enchanting well, he... of the items. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Like, he, he creates them and, and creates them in a way that allows them to accept enchantment fairly well, but the actual enchanting is done by Swervathan. Understood. Got it. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah, I'll just add, yeah. I'll just bag chink. Let's put these down. Oh. Uh, you wish to trade them? Sell them, as, perhaps? Not specifically. Uh, but we'll see what you have to say. These are almost great for me. Um, it was my understanding they require a specific uh, type of personality that I don't have. <laughs> I see. To be effective, I right? <clears throat> uh, and so I'm just, you know, can you alter that enchantment to perhaps be a little more physical? Well, uh, give me a moment to see what it is that you mean. And uh, he he sticks out his tongue and, and touches it to his finger and then nice. touches that to his forehead, which then causes a, from the spot where he touched, lines of light to drop down into his eyes. And now his eyes are glowing a uh, kind of greenish color. And he begins looking at the weapons, and uh, he uh, asks, asks, may I? Uh, wanting to touch and hold the weapons. Yeah, I mean, go ahead. Uh, and so with your permission, he does that, and he begins kind of turning them over, looking at them, uh, looking at very, very um, intently uh, and studiously over the items. I think I see what you mean. It requires a, a strong personality in order to really get the best benefit out of the weapon. But you're wishing for something different? Yeah. Uh, I prefer to uh, uh, enforce my will on others in a more physical manner. You know what I mean? Um, I think I do. Well, you don't get these crossbows, you know, by reading a book. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I guess maybe there's guns in this world. You don't get these <laughs> these guns at uh, <laughs> uh, wands or or uh, crossbows would be the best. I mean, guns exist, but they're fairly rare. Yeah, I figured artific some artificers have some. So, um, I, I I suppose that there is something I can do. It will take time, probably about oh a week. <sighs> it's never fast. If you want magic done right, it's better to go slow and steady. No, I understand. The real question is, uh, what's the cost? Uh... <laughs> and, um... or, and or do you have a uh, alternative? Uh... Yeah. Hold on. Hand the baby off to somebody. Where the hell did you get a baby in the shop? <laughs> Can you make sure that ends up in the yeah in the fridge? Yeah. Um. Well, I I mean, you would need to see if Heb has anything of similar quality or or value on his side of the shop. Um. But. In terms of cost, 
for what you're asking for. Uh, the because I have to consider the cost of the materials and the time and effort. I I, I couldn't do this for less than two so coins. As I like look back to the group, I'm almost seems reasonable. But what do I know? <clears throat> um, seems fine to me. Um, you are the one holding the soul coins, after all. Yeah, that's just a formality. Like, <clears throat> well, I guess there are a, a couple of considerations. One, I wish almost we had access to the stuff we were storing in the vehicle, as I don't really think we're going to need that bone staff of evil we got from the Zorn. <laughs> but it, it would be good to get it identified, possibly just sell it. But if we, uh, you know, I, I'm going to point, I'm going to, well, well, I won't point to, I will reference that there's a, the Ring of Spell story, uh, which would enable me to store spells, including healing magic, but whatever spells we feel necessary in the ring and then give it to one of you. And then you would have access to those spells. Yeah. I mean, how long do you say this would take? A week, at least. I don't even know if we'll be at that place for a week. I doubt we'll be here for a week. It would be immensely expensive. Unless Master Hawkins is that pleased with our work. Exactly. There's also some scrolls of healing magic that we could carry in lieu of uh, potions. Although then only I could cast it. What is uh, what is the what would be the price tag on this, or this this ring? The ring. For that, I would need five soul coins. And how much for these three scrolls? I could part with those for two soul coins. For all three, that is. If you wanted to split them up, it would be less. So what is the magic of these uh, swords you're trying to get enchanted? Well, I, I feel like we would need to get it done faster, but I, it does. I mean, he recommended necrotic. This thing does necrotic. But if I were to wield them, that necrotic would not be as potent. Still, uh, I agree. Yeah. It does does seem like two soul coins would be a bargain. It would be a bargain, but I don't think we need it. We'll need that necessarily in a week. I don't know how effective Necrotic is against these damn demons that we've been fighting. Hmm. Have you seen... It could make it more valuable. For uh, if we decide to resell the later point, I mean, have you seen, have you seen how attractive people are here in Fernia? They don't have uh, 
they they don't have the they don't have the uh they don't have the gumption to pull that weapon off in general but uh you know if it was changed to uh changed to uh, work off of a different a different attribute it could make it more available and more interesting to other people it's just a thought But it 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 strikes me that the most uh, that it strikes me that if we were able to stay alive a little bit longer, or one of us, then it would we might have more damage output that way than beating up a weapon. But. And the ring of spell storing. I you you are aware of my ability to simply cure damage round after round. My aura of vitality where I cure 2d6 around. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That could be stored in the ring of spell storing as well as three of the five spell levels. So it could be a significant amount of healing, although slightly complicated to use in combat. I mean <laughs> The ring definitely seems like a good good option. I feel like that would have more utility overall. I agree. But with the swords, if if you wanted, it would be a trivial matter to also change the type of energy that resonates with it. Right now, it is necrotic damage, it appears to be. Very heavy magic of necromancy around this these swords. But that can be altered. I don't think it's the type of magic that's at issue. We like the type. It's that, uh, frankly, Ewan is not very friendly, and it's powered by friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Swervethan laughs heartily at that. <laughs> and it, yeah, and I'm like, no. <laughs> they haven't gone drinking with me yet. <laughs> So, what do you wish to do? I think we should do, uh, we should get to the ring. But for five soul coins, can it come preloaded? <laughs> with, what? with one? What, what do you mean preloaded? I don't know. Uh, can we get the get a, throw in a spell scroll for free? <laughs> spell scroll for free? Free? No. I mean, as a combo deal for five soul coins. Five I'm... soul coins for this is a bargain. But it isn't the steal. <laughs> Nor should it be. I do not want anybody stealing from me. <laughs> um. And Kurt, because uh, I imagine you, when you found the ring, you touched it, um, mm -hmm. and and probably brought it up to the counter. Uh, give me an arcana check. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> you have action points. I don't need an action point on our cat attack. Uh, <laughs> I assume he'll give us our money back if it's like broken. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a reputation. <laughs> And I'm not even going to be the one wearing it. So if it's cursed. <laughs> Fair. Oh, wish. What do you wish to do? How shall we proceed with this transaction? Uh, this was like, well, all right, then what kind of, uh, what kind of energies, uh, do we use against these damn fiends? Huh? What, what's effective? I don't know. I don't recall very much that was being, as being incredibly effective. Wasn't one of your uh, one of the prophecies you heard said that we need to be able to deal cold damage, radiant damage? I've been using a lot; seems to have worked for the most part. Yeah, I mean, if we could do either of those. If we need cold, then perhaps we go with that. Though I would wonder whether or not there are weapons already in the other side of the shop that maybe do cold or radiant damage. That's true. And the primary, the primary issue with this particular set of weapons is the, that it draws on your charisma. Right. So that would still be th uh, the issue. Unless it's not. Have you and a, you remember enchanting anything over there with uh, radiant or cold? It's likely. You would need to check on that side, though. I enchant so much, I don't, I'm not able to keep track of it all. Any chance at all of uh, one of those enchantments not relying on this charisma? I mean, it's the powers that I enchant into objects come in a variety of methods. Hmm. Well, perhaps we'll go look. Let's go have a quick look, huh? I'll go look. You guys do whatever. Yeah, I don't remember. I, I seem to think, so there are some things that we borrowed uh, from the shop uh, that he hasn't asked for us to return yet. So I don't know what, I don't even remember that we use some of them. Like we have a, uh, I think we use, I have written down the scroll of remove curse and I believe we cast that because the wound was like separated with something that we decided was possibly cursed. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't remember, I also have a scroll of dispel magic. I don't remember if we used that. And we definitely used the, uh, the staff, the immovable staff. And I don't remember even where we specifically got it, but that seems likely it was here. Hmm. Um, yeah, and, you know, Swerbathan and Heb don't seem concerned by that, because, um, you, you would guess that Master Hawkins has taken care of it, so if they are, if, if Master Hawkins hadn't provided his own guarantee, they probably would, would be more 
concerned about getting back anything that they provided on loan. But right. Well, I mean, um, if we use that's the thing, I didn't think to cross off the the either of those spell scrolls. So I don't remember if we used the dispel magic one or not, really. Uh, I'm just guessing. So in which case they're they're basically used up and gone. Uh the immovable staff though, we should probably return. <laughs> It's, we didn't buy it, and it. Um, yeah. So, which one of you has it and is going to return it? Uh, it's on my list of items, so I guess I'll return it. And I think we, I, I assume we used up the whole paint can, a can of numbing agent. Oh yeah. That I'll do. So, um, and then I will, I will slide the ring back and say, it seems as though we're still deciding what to where to spend our money, but we may be back for this shortly. And then I'll I, I still think the ring's you. a good idea. But yeah. Uh, we'll yeah. <laughs> so did you say that in front of him? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I didn't hear what Tony said, actually. Perfect. <laughs> he said, I, I still think that ring is a good idea. Very excitedly. <laughs> and then, I, then I caught it. I, I read what was going on. I was like, yeah, but we'll look. We'll look and see what happens. <laughs> Playing hardball, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what are you guys doing now? Uh, we're going and looking at weapons again. Yeah. See we should just keep, any... keep yeah. coming in and out of this side <laughs> of the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to leave the door open, or? Oh, that's a great thing. It's a a bead door. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the door is always open, man. There's no way. <laughs> that cat has tore that shit down. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So you you guys are looking for weapons that deal cold damage, or radiant, or radiant. Okay. Um. So everybody that's looking, give me an investigation check. Oh, here we go. I'm going to use a moxie. Uh, Cause uh, what, where is it at? I got a, I got an ability. My, yeah, my detective work. I give myself an advantage. <laughs> okay. Investigation. Oh my god! Are you fucking kidding me? I no combats, right? I'm going to use an action point. <laughs> okay. That's better. Um, so, um, you and you find uh, a short sword of frost. So it deals, it, it's, it's a, it, it deals uh, an additional 1D six or eight, let's see. Above 50, and it's eight. Oh, six. God damn it. Uh, an additional 1d6 cold damage. Um, and then
Um, and then branded one, you find a uh, a magical focus that is gilded, uh, and it whenever you cast a spell or cantrip, uh, you deal an additional let's see over fifty it's a d eight. Uh, one second. Uh, an additional one d six radiant damage whenever you cast a cantrip or spell. Uh, to one target. Short sword is something that uh, virtually any of you three could use. Right. Or Melodia. I wonder if it Although requires our... attunement. I have got plenty of weapons. <laughs> to be fair, so do I, but... Everything is a weapon to you, and... That's right. So long as I can pick it up. I can use it as a weapon. <clears throat> so this is mostly about the cold damage. Right. If I could throw ice, I would. <laughs> my, uh, my, uh, one of the daggers, and he taps, uh, he taps, uh, he taps uh, one of them uh, on his his uh, bandolier. It uh, it can it can produce cold damage if I'm lucky. What does that mean? What, what if you're not lucky? Look where look where you are. Nobody's lucky here. It it produces uh let's see is the metamorphic dagger does it? Does it uh change its damage type based off of the creatures the creatures the resistance or immunities? Because it says it changes in response to what whatever creature it harms by passing its defenses. So like and then you learn I guess I'll Uh, yeah, so if the creature has a vulnerability, it changes to become the type that is, matches that vulnerability. If, if the creature has resistance to any particular types of damage, the dagger does a, a type of damage that is not that. Gotcha. Or no, that's not. I'm I'm wrong. Reading it more closely, it just uh, a a creature attacked with the metamorphic da dagger can never apply resistance or immunity to that damage. Gotcha. But it doesn't give any. It doesn't give any. Um... It doesn't give any uh it doesn't change the actual type. No. Gotcha. But you just learn, you learn about it. You learn about their their immunities. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
And um, I'm changing the short shirt of frost. That's that's boring. What's more fun is what you and it had said, being able to throw ice. So instead, uh, you and are you wearing any bracers or gauntlets? Nope. Okay. So it is uh, a it's kind of a fingerless glove uh, and it allows you as part of your attack action to summon a weapon into that hand made of ice that deals whatever that damage that that weapon's damage normally is but it de deals it in cold damage uh or you can summon a large chunk of ice and just huck it <laughs> <clears throat> um and they're just they're bracers you said Fingerless it's, gloves. It's it, it's one it's one glove, one fingerless glove that you wear on one gotcha. of your hands. Even gotcha. better. One glove. I like to think bedazzled with little like blue gems. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gonna be called the ice chucker. Um well yeah, I mean that seems good. Does the glove fit? Oh, and and yeah, and to point out, <laughs> <laughs> and to point out, uh, I don't know about the ice chucker, but the ring of spell story does require attunement, so it might be less useful if nobody has a free slot, which I know Blade doesn't. Yeah, uh, how many slots does you? How how many? What are your slots, guys? Like, who has attunement slots? Uh, I think I only have one used up, but I should check. Um, does this boomerang require an attunement? I wonder. I think so. I will look a look. Requires attunement, yes. So I have the boomerang and the belt. Oh, technically, I, I have one open slot because I have this necklace of spell transmutation that I've never used. <laughs> so... Oh, uh, wait. I do have my wound closure. I think uh, you guys, when I initially created your character sheets, I put a spot where it, it tracks your attunement slots in, like, your resources. So I don't know if you guys have updated them there. That's a quick reference place where you can see that that's not how i've i don't have that but that's not how i i just have all of my magic items under the uh the abilities on the side and mm -hmm. i specifically note at the front like which are attuned and which aren't mm -hmm. so it's my my magic shield and that necklace i'm pretty sure blade is full because he had to yeah end his full. achievement on the Short yeah. warning. Yeah, yeah, he's got the bandoliers which take two, and the uh, the shield which takes one. It's good, still though, since the sword of warning was basically just screaming in your ear twenty four seven. It's probably <laughs> worth on the tuning to that. Yeah, it's like finally I can get a. Well, he doesn't really sleep, so it didn't it didn't bother him. But I'm sure if he did sleep, he would be very thankful. <laughs> um yeah I'd, I'd have the, to what's what is end. the range on the ice checker too uh so it's gonna be like a normal improvised drone weapon so i think that's what 2060 maybe I figure 
if I if we get this just to make it a little bit more useful, I, I think I'll just put it in there uh sixty one twenty. <laughs> I'm lobbing this thing like a fucking baseball. <laughs> um <clears throat> Well, yeah, okay. So, I mean, if that's the case, then... It might be worth picking up. I'd probably... When it comes to time to needing to use that... Uh, unattuned to the boomerang. What is What are Lux attunement slots like? Because she could also use... Ice-based monk weapons. That's true. Uh, I think I got one left. Um. Yeah, Lux, is there anything that you're looking for or wanting as part of this shopping trip? Um... You know, if they had like some kind of uh, necklace that uh, stored souls when I couldn't store them anymore, when I was already <laughs> maxed out, and then like on a bonus action, I could like release the stored souls to get, you know, that would be cool. Give me a investigation check. Double 15s. Um, I'm going to say, yeah. You find something very similar to what you're looking for. It's going to require attunement, but uh, you can take that residual energy from the soul of those killed around you and store that store them in the necklace and you can access them by using a bonus action uh but you can only store uh a number of souls equal to half your proficiency bonus rounded down Okay, so it's one less than what I was thinking. All right. Necklace of Lux must be attuned by someone named Lux. So, of the items that you guys have found, what are you considering? I mean, I will put the golden wand back on the shelf because we only have eight soul coins left. <laughs> Seems like uh, we're not even going to get all three of the items we're currently looking at. All right, so you want the ice chucker and the soul necklace? Yeah. What do we think about the ring? Can anybody use it? Would anybody be able to use it? I don't know what Melodia has as far as attunement goes. Well, no, no. if if Lux doesn't get the soul necklace, she would be able to use the ring. If she does get it, then she wouldn't be able to attune to the ring, too. I think the ring is more valuable. So the necklace would be only really benefit me, and I suppose the ring would help everybody. So,
So the ice chucker, if you were to ask about it, that's going to be one soul coin. Uh, the soul necklace is going to be Honestly, realistically, because it's such a niche item, I would say it's probably only going to be two soul coins. So you, w with the eight soul coins that you guys have remaining, you could get the ring, the ice chucker, and the necklace. When you say no. <laughs> remain, <laughs> you know, that, means, that means we would have no more soul coins. <laughs> oh, you'd still have half a soul coin. <laughs> not like we need it to power the car right but if we ever come back here again and we want to stay at this gold seven golden seals we could stay for approximately half the night before they take <laughs> us out one of us could stay for half the night <laughs> and it wouldn't really make sense actually to get all three of these items uh unless i take the ring of spell storing and wear it but in a funny way, it's almost less useful if I wear it because I can already cast spells. I could just store a few more spells in it. Man, it's not terrible. Come in handy if we run into uh, a creature that literally tests our limits. Yeah. And if nothing else, maybe it uh, could be used in a pinch. We could take a rest and attuned to it and use it to heal you or something. So here's where my knowledge of the Ring of Spell storing fails me. I don't I don't know if I guess I guess you could do that. Just store the spells in it and then because you can find them with spells in it. Yeah. Well, it, it would make sense for one of us to have it because the, that way, if well, if uh, the branded one, you know, if something happens, then one of us could, you know, do something. You know, I'm assuming there would be healing spells in there. Besides, how's the sign look? Does the windows need washed? I mean, we're, we're trying to. <laughs> is there any way to cut a deal with this guy? Does he need like? <laughs> Uh, you know, some roof work done. Um, <laughs> Go ahead and give me an insight check. Sweat equity. Uh, yeah, he has, he, he, you would say, be able to think that he needs things done, but nothing that you can see. And maybe not anything you'd want to do. <laughs> I don't know with this bunch. You never know. Right? <laughs> we go to Lulu. We buy a bunch of cat dip. And then <laughs> <laughs> when he's distracted, we take our stuff and run. We go find an empty box, and then yeah. I wonder. I wonder how Heb would react if somebody used Caterlick around him. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm back. Good. So, um, what what were we saying last? I mean, it does seem as though the other items are a little more reasonably priced than the Ring of Spells during. And there will be times when the Ring of Spells during is empty and I won't have the spells to refill it.
after. Oh, can you turn off the burner? It's done now. Thank you. All right, so you guys want the ice chucker, you want the necklace, and you do not want the ring. Not sure. Not sure we made a decision. I think we definitely want the ice chucker. And it sort of comes down to does Lux prefer to wear the ring or the uh, the necklace? Because you, you're the only other person other than me with like a free slot. I think the, the ring would make sense, but it's up to you guys if you think that's too expensive. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I suppose it's... We could think of it that way of what's going to get most the most used. The ring of spell storing might sit with the spells on it for who knows how long. Then it's used, and then it's days before we could recharge it. Right. There is always that problem. Whereas the you know the ice checker and the the necklace. Uh, probably going to get a decent number of use. I'll be honest with you. I have no idea what this necklace is supposed to do. It stores souls and then you release the soul when you want to <laughs> as a bonus action. Great. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, yeah, I don't know what this does either. And there, there also could be occasions when we don't store healing magic. Like, yeah, I don't currently have the ability, but it could store spells like fly, polymorph. Hmm. Though it all work, that all requires essentially time off, which I don't feel like we get. To prepare the proper spells and store them. Right. There have been there have been some time where we've been trapped in the storm and unable to leave the leave the uh leave the uh leave our car. So, the storm that if we didn't get out of it was gonna kill us. That's one. Yes. There was time. Um, there hasn't been any downtime for a while, but uh, it happens. Um, so uh, I think it comes down to, uh, again, I wouldn't be wearing the ring anyway. So I think it just comes down to what do you believe, Lux, would be more useful for you? Do you believe it's the necklace? That's would certainly leave us with soul coins to spend on other things in the future. Well, uh, yeah, nothing's to say that uh, the necklace couldn't help you guys with an action point. So, <laughs> um. I mean, that's fair about the ring. I mean, uh, leaving here with no half a soul coin doesn't sound like a good idea. Indeed. Well, if if we only get the ring or only get the necklace, we would have more than half. If we If we only got the ring and left the necklace behind, we would have two and a half soul coins. We would have half a soul coin left if we got the ring and the necklace and this fingerless glove. And the, the spells, you have to have a slot. Like, you have to... Well, how does that work? Like, I would have to cast them upon the ring, which would then store them for later use. Right, but you have to have a spell slot to do that? I would have to have spell slots, and I would have to right. expend it to fill the ring. Yeah, okay. But if I did that, 
right before we were about to rest anyway, frequently it would not have a, a an impact. Yeah. Get this ring preloaded. Now, there may be spells in the ring. I think you have to put it on to figure that out. I mean, they might know. Mm. Comes from a factory default setting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's got wish, time stop. What else is in there? <laughs> uh, put in a username and password in order to create an account just to use it. It's a fucking iPhone. <laughs> it's somebody still logged into it. Well, I say we all stare at Lux until she makes a decision. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take I'll take the necklace. Uh, I think the, the the glove and the necklace. How, what was that? How, how many soul points will that leave us? Four and a half or something, or five and a half? How many we got? Eight total. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. So five and a half. It's random encounters or something. What's going on over here? <laughs> um, yeah, I just you know, soul coin is soul coins are the currency here, and like to have none, it's just going to be. Yeah, that's fair. Perhaps with our new items, we can uh, acquire some new ones. Yeah. Only we. Anyway. Um. So the ring does have one third level spell on it. There you go. It's used. Yeah. <laughs> it's obviously. Yep. <laughs> You just sell, sell us a pre-owned ring? Come on now. I have many people that come in here and trade just as you did before. Do you know what the spell is? Yes, it is called Psychic Blast. Sounds painful. Whoa. <laughs> she did not like that spell. She cast psychic blast. She she did. Psychic blast to my eardrums. <laughs> That's sonic uh, damage. Thunder damage. Yeah. <laughs> um so um trying to find the oh it's it's psionic blast so this is this is a spell of my own devising i believe more food So if we wanted it, we would just shake the ring to get that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not it. <clears throat> yeah, but it sounds like we're getting we're getting the necklace and the uh, and the glove. Okay. And despite. Despite the seeming ignorance, it was all just a ruse, the seeming ignorance to get the ring. <laughs> the yeah, eagerness, I should say, to get the ring. Because uh, we leave that behind. <laughs> okay. 
So you guys have five and a half soul points left. Yep. All right. Anything else that you guys want to do while you're here? Nope. I think that's the end of the shopping. Yeah, I think we got we're maxed out. Unless they're gonna open up uh some la like a layaway plan or something. <laughs> got a line of credit. I don't think I don't need anything more. <clears throat> did my uh did my maiming get reversed or uh, am I still scarred? Oh no, you're still scarred. All right, cool. I'll keep the picture then. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's gonna be with you for life. Um. All right. Were there any other merchants that you guys wanted to visit? I mean, other than Lulu, I'm not really aware of what we've bought here before. So I think uh, we're good. You don't want any more pets? Uh, go go uh, make my, a visit to Ekman. Yeah. Uh, the branded one is okay not getting more pets. <laughs> Whether Blade thinks uh, Walla Walla needs a brother or sister, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Blade forgot about Walla Walla. He realizes that he never had any food out. <laughs> well, well, it's dead when we get back. <laughs> or water. Well, even if you left out water and food, Walla Walla probably wouldn't eat it anyways because koalas are so dumb. <laughs> walla Walla. <laughs> sure, I'm sure Trebek is taking care of Walla Walla. We should. <laughs> if only we had the damn koala with us, maybe we could sell it back, get our <laughs> money back. <laughs> I feel like that would be more difficult than buying him. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, I don't have any uh anything else. The uh Blade doesn't have anything else that he was gonna get. Okay. Uh so as you guys walk out of the charms and harms, uh Master Hawkins approaches and he says, Hey guys, I I, I found it. I found the perfect thing for you guys. Uh and then he just holds out uh, a bunch of potion vials. And he says, these are potions of excellence. What is potion of excellence? What makes you excellent? So let's say you're hurt real bad. Let's say you're running low on energy. You need a pick-me-up. You drink a potion of excellence and you're all better. And he, he gives a like a thumbs up. Is it the does it get mechanically does it heal you to full health or uh so mechanically what it does is it you uh, unlike most potions this one requires an action to take uh most uh, otherwise most potions in my games are an object interaction but this one is an action and it fully restores all of your hit points all of your resources it's equivalent to taking 
a long, well, it actually it's equivalent to taking two long rests. So it also reduces your, well, no, one long rest, but it also reduces all of your levels of exhaustion to zero. The catch is that until you take an another long rest, your vitality points are at zero and can't be refilled. So it refills you completely at full, but it also creates uh, a risk that if if you lose all of your hit points, then you die. You don't have the benefit of the vitality point buffer. We'll, we'll gladly take it, and if we need it, great. If it's sense of great than me, if we need it, that means something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> no, I meant, I meant if we don't need it, great. But if then, uh, if we need it, it'll be great to have. <laughs> Exactly. So is there like one for each of us? Yeah. Uh, and actually, one other effect, it also refills your action points. What if you're down over half your uh, hit die? It refills all of your hit die. What, what's it called again? Potion, Potion of, of excellence. excellence. I can only think of like, like Bill and Ted's. <laughs> I was gonna say the same thing. <laughs> excellent. Be excellent to each other. Okay. <laughs> 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 Uh, so yeah, this I I really thank you guys for everything, and Wilfred thanks you too. I mean, it's fine. That that task was practically a piece of cake compared to the shit we've been dealing with, so. If it oh, happens I... again, we can take care of it again. Well, I hope your journey ahead is uh, easier than it seems like it has been. I wouldn't count on it. This may be the last time we see each other. <laughs> Every time could be the last time. But especially here. It's been well... good. I hope we get to see each other again. You do have another token of return, so come back anytime. We will try our best. We got everything. We're going back. Yep. I believe, believe we are to that hellscape. Um, do you guys uh, want to, before you go, do you want to take a, an hour to attune to your magic items? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could throw the ice the same distance I could throw the boomerang, so that's good. But just in case, I, I'll be keeping the boomerang. I see no reason why I can't still throw it like a normal weapon. <laughs> yeah. Well, wait, are you de-attuning to it? Yeah, I'd have to de-attune it to that. Okay, yeah, so it functions like a normal weapon. The only thing is that you can't use the thunder right. damage or whatever. 
Yep. Um, but yeah, otherwise it would still function fine for you. Um, all right, so then uh, are you guys returning to the scab? Yep. All right. So you return to the scab in the spot that you last left it. Uh, let's see where that is. No. Yeah. So you return to the scab and the smell hits you like a punch in the face and the, the heat and the humidity are so much more intense here. Uh, it takes a second to get to your senses um, once you pass through back into the scab. But after a moment, you're able to recover uh, and which way do you want to proceed? Uh, I, I have a black screen. You might need to give my token vision. We're way over on the far side of the screen. You may just be on the wrong spot. Oh, I see. Yep, I was. In the anus. Bless you. Bless you. Um. How did you describe the ice trucker again? I just, I just make the weapon and it does the normal damage, but in ice instead of normal or right. In, so in additional you... ice. No, so if you were to say, I want a great axe, and as you go to attack, you summon a great axe into your hand made of ice, instead of doing 2d6 slashing damage, you would do 2d6 cold damage. Got it. Oh. Um. And since the the chucking the ice is going to be like your improvised weapons, that would just use your um, pugilist damage. Yeah, I mean, I figured I'll just be summoning weapons that I'm proficient in anyways, so yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to make it some complicated weapons. It could be like a fucking club. <laughs> Beat somebody with ice. I mean, most of the time. I guess occasionally it might be like a dagger so I can pierce. Well, I guess, again, it's ice damage, not piercing damage, so. Right. <laughs> so, I remember, if I recall, or more uh, uh, Blade recalls, we bamfed out next to the hole where Ewan nearly died. Yeah. And uh so if we go back north there's nothing um going back south was uh well we could see this hole from the from like above i think yeah but so we, but, this this is the direction we haven't explored yet we would say we the only way is ahead. And he starts like going south. He's going to uh he's going to uh 
uh, move sneakily um, and attempt to uh, avoid triggering any random blood clots and uh, spore demons and whatever else is down here. Uh, it did my time uh, in recovery at the place uh, perhaps restore the tubes? No, it did not. God damn it. What good is that place? <laughs> um, by the way, do you, do any of you have any levels of exhaustion or did you guys heal all of them? Should, mine are all healed. Well, I'm, I'm good. Okay. And I still have 11 hit points from a Hero's Feast. That's right. So you guys, whoever partook in the Hero's Feast caused that. Yep. Uh, what's I wait to see. Wait to see if anything he explained. <laughs> uh, I will sneak with Vegnog, but I won't be able to light the way, unfortunately. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. Beg, uh, Be blade, blade, uh, blade doesn't have uh, dark vision. Uh, I, will cast, I will cast light on my shield and then sneak after you. And we got our hit dice back oh. too. Is it half or whatever? You get. Um, you know, for the purpose of the. Being at the Wandering Emporium, just give yourself all of them. And and actually, I need to. I am showing you guys the DM screen. Well, that's the good one. Yeah. What's going on? Is it not loading? Oh, I forgot. I also have to. So we're back in like brand new day. I cast greater mage armor. That would have been embarrassing if I forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't have. I don't suppose we have like a, a easy way of communicating with Trebek. Nope. nope. Hope he's okay. Go back and Trebek has like joined a warlord's band. He's like <laughs> now in charge of the band. Yeah, he is the warlord. Yeah, <laughs> he's the, he's became the warlord. <laughs> He stunned them all with his amazing questions that, or his ma amazing answers that nobody knew how to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Reply, respond with questions too. What sorcery is this? You know the answer before you've asked the question. <laughs> I'm afraid you didn't pose that in the form of a question. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> You know who has a high enough charisma to use those swords? <laughs> Trebex, Trebex plus, plus three. That's right. Well, I still have them, so. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, so you guys continue down this corridor. Stealthily. Stealthily. <clears throat> Solid two on that roll, but. <laughs> um. Uh, 
And uh, <laughs> I also, uh, Blade's gonna don his uh, the shield of the hidden lord, um, and kind of be holding it out in front of him, okay? So, you guys managed to get down, and, and the tunnel comes to a ledge. And though there's a great deal of, of darkness, uh, you can see that it is a huge drop. And below you, you see what, in the darkness, there is an area that is lit up. You can't really make out much, but you can make out that there seem to be some stone, some stonework um, down there. It is, the area is wide enough and down far enough that Vegnag would need to open his wings and release his love handles in order for everybody to get down safely. Got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I guess this is, it's, it's a little further south of where we're at. Yeah. And then Brandon one says, oh, we should have brought more rope. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> Gonna have to go back. Carrying like a hundred pounds of fucking rope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very far down. Like, based on how far down it is, it's probably the very base of the mountain. So it could be as much as like two, three thousand feet. Could be. Might not be. And I think that's what we should focus on. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I guess uh blade looks like peers over the edge and says well I could get this down but uh, as he kind of looks over I don't think we're getting back up this way so well but we know we need to get to the base of this uh, mass and we might get the, there must be some way out to begin with and we might get lucky and the mass will disappear once we cure whatever the scab is formed around yes we might get the lucky we might get trapped but we are here uh, we are here to risk it either way <laughs> Vegnog will deploy his love handles. Um, and uh, unfortunately, Melodia, Melodia uh, has to take the, the fifth seat. Can her dragon fly? Yes, or but it's a medium sized creature. So it's too small for Melodia to ride on. Ow. So shall we? Yep. So yeah, the wings come out, the love handles come out. The uh, the fifth the fifth the fifth love handle comes out. And uh, everybody grabs on. <laughs> is, that, is that the one in the crotch area? It is, yeah. <laughs> Got it. There's, there are five of us. <laughs> the the oh, yeah. true love handle. Like, no, there's four of us. But uh, 
It still comes out anyway. <laughs> and uh yeah, we uh I imagine that uh you know <clears throat> uh we all do like a like a running start. Like uh we imagine that maybe you guys strap yourselves in. I think you guys did that last time that you flew Vegnog. Uh you made up like some some sashes, like some harnesses from rope just to fix yourself in the case you let go. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are going to do that this time or just chance a, a drop into the abyss. But uh, we I, mean, have I, I, right. I don't know what we got. I don't remember how we have, would have done it the last time. So, uh, I'm 100 percent sure my character wasn't here for the last time. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think I, as a player, was here for when we actually flew down. But yeah, I, I would definitely uh, use some of our remaining rope to tie myself on. <clears throat> you don't you don't trust the love handle alone. <laughs> I I don't necessarily trust my ability to maintain a grip on the love handle <laughs> for the whole flight down. What if we hit turbulence? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could we could we could pass. Pass. We hit could. a heat draft. <laughs> yeah. We could rise back up. <laughs> I mean, this thing has this uh this this. This thing has organs. Yeah, exactly. Pass. Yeah, what's this thing fucking passes gas and <laughs> raises us back up again? Yeah. What if that's how we get up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I'm just picturing like that will be how Blade levels up. He can self propel. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, so I imagine when they re take do like a running start and just go off the edge once we're all fixed in. All right, so the descent takes a few minutes, but eventually you land in the area where you see the light. A fucking polar bear. And this is what you see before you. The ground is not the consistency of flesh uh, and rot that you had previously seen, but it seems like almost normal grass uh, with statues that seem to be lining the area having been shattered. <clears throat> and at the end of this circle, you see these three creatures, two of them enormous, uh, with the, the one in the middle quite petite, even by the standards of normal people. I take a moment to feel bad for polar bear man in Fernia. <laughs> yeah. Um, so actually the temperature here is quite comfortable. Uh, very much like what you would find on a nice autumn day in Corbear. Let's be a mammal self-regulating temperature. Um, do, are they, do they, are they, they, they just standing there? Does it look like they were expecting us? So it doesn't, they were doing something else 
it seemed like, but when they see you, they kind of stand up straighter and uh, turn to you. And then um, just so you can see what these things look like. <clears throat> see if I can do this while holding Maddox. This can be her first encounter. This is what one of them look like. I want to be that. Damn, that bear is ripped. <laughs> Clearly eats his Wheaties every day. <laughs> he must work out. <laughs> this is the other large one. And then between the two of them is this. Hmm. What? What is going on? Stop it. The polar bear's back legs look like they're like half as long as his front legs. Right. Uh, yeah. He's a bit disproportionate. Um, but the the three uh just kind of wait and observe you guys without really. It, it it seems like they're waiting to see what you do. Um, we're not even sure what we're gonna do. <laughs> Should lance a lot this shit. Just run in, swinging. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard the tale of <laughs> Sir Leroy Jenkins? <laughs> the bold. <laughs> um, yeah. Hurt. Uh, give me an arcana check. Okay. So I'm going to send you a message. Should have got those gold gold tip things, gold arrows or whatever. A holy a holy bear. It's okay. Okay, it's done. <clears throat> Ooh. Good job. So I, I will say. 
Well, from the temperature and everything else, I don't think we're in Fernia anymore. I think we've moved into some other dimension or plane. Damn it, well, Blade. This must have been the fifth love handle. We pulled it too hard. <laughs> you didn't say it was also a ripcord. <laughs> What the? Uh, what plane do you think we are in? I am not sure at all. It may be like a pocket dimension, like the one you mentioned for that Fane or woman. We could. I mean, we could try to ask. They may be willing to talk. I mean, they're at least not immediately hostile, so that's a change. So the the polar the giant polar bear, um, the that halberd that he wields is currently on his back, so it's not he's not holding it in his arms. Um, and the. The other large creature looks it does look like it's in its pose. It's it's got its arms kind of wrapped around itself. <clears throat> the the smaller figure seems to be standing there very very difficult to read that one. But ne none of them are giving the impression that they are immediately hostile. Uh, so I will, I'm going to yell out, pardon me, can you help us? We're lost. <clears throat> um, so in response, you hear, you hear a voice in your heads, uh, and it says, um, come approach us and we shall tell you where you are and what is to happen next uh and with that we'll we'll end the session tonight I, sorry guys i i need to end early because with maddox okay i need to go to bed yeah, yeah you've okay. been up yeah 40 hours straight no, I, I slept a little bit, like three and a half hours. Oh, so, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, then there's no excuses. You should be yeah, good to go. Yeah, what the hell? Right. Yeah. Fuck it, let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, also... I, yeah, I with... was, was going to say, like, that's, that is a promising start. You and you go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, also... You know, I don't want to move much forward uh, without Frank, if we can help it, just yeah, because right. what happens next, I'd like everybody to be present for. For sure. If possible. Yeah, right. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, 